hello students hopefully you are in good mental health during this uh, lockdown and hopefully you are continuing your study so let's start uh, from ps tutorial cvc class 9 uh, our today's topic is the first chapter from chemistry matter in our surroundings okay so first we have an idea or have and have uh, the definition of what is matter okay so matter means what uh, we can conclude the definition of matter in two way in physically uh, in phys uh, through physical properties as well as chemical properties so in this chapter we can conclude the matter in physical properties okay so what is matter matter means anything in this universe anything in this earth occupies some space as well as having a mass and volume that means what is matter a matter can be defined physically like this anything in the earth that occupies some space as well as having a mass and volume okay so uh, as we are saying that in this chapter Uh, we conclude the matter or we consider the matter uh, through the physical properties that means the properties or the definitions or the category or the classification all these things will be in the sense of physical world that means how the uh, how the structure of the matter uh, is there any particles by which the matter is combining or uh, any property how they behave how the particles are behaving in the nature how they are reacting is there any special property by the mat uh, of the particle of the matter uh, is there any evidence that this kind of properties are in, we are imposing some properties of matter so is there any evidence that uh, from that we can conclude these properties so these things are in the in this chapter so first all matters are combining or formed by some small tiny particles that means matter matters are formed in some small tiny particles we can call them atoms or molecule but the thing is this is there any proof by which we can um, say uh, we can say that uh, these particles uh, these uh, tiny particles are really happen or they have some property there so first we need to know what are the evidence by which we can say this matter is um, the matter is the matter is constituting this particle okay so let's start the the some particles and it is said that these particles are constantly moving these particles are constantly moving so now evidence or proof evidence or proof by for which that this tiny particles matters are constituting these tiny particles and they are constantly moving so as a evidence evidence there is there will be three process first diffusion what diffusion diffusion is a process where the if there are if two solutions or if uh, Uh, two other material having the difference of densities they are combining 
and after the combination there will be a equal density of the both of this and there will be a combining material from the previous two materials okay so this is called diffusion again uh, first uh, again this is the first and second proof is brownian motion robert brown brownian motion robert brown found this this is an another proof and the third tyndall effect tyndall effect so first we know that uh, there are three processes by which we can say that the matters are constituting with the particles and these particles are constantly moving so let's check what are the processes actually happening in these processes and how the processes are our proof to consider that particles are continuously moving so the first diffusion suppose uh diffusion diffusion suppose you have some uh, amount of some amount of sugar and in a beaker you have some water okay so if you are pouring this sugar in the water it will make a solution of water and sugar so first just pour this sugar in the water that means after pouring this sugar occupy the last most end of this container okay this is the first case and after some time if you are stirring this constantly so after some time after some time this amount of sugar from this end are decreasing and there is nothing seen that where are the particles are so and again after some time and again after some time the sugar will totally dissolve when the sugar in this case the sugar will if the sugar will totally dissolve that means what is the explanation of this dissolving the explanation we can say that if this water and sugar are dissolving to make a solution then you cannot separate the water molecule and the sugar molecule that means in this water molecule suppose this are the water molecule and at this end the sugar granules like this closely packed there will be no space between them okay so if they are dissolving that means this water molecule in this water the molecules are very much displaced from each other and in this spaces the in this spaces the particles of sugar molecule not granules granules means a one sugar granules means there are a or there are many tiny particles of sugar so if this dissolve that means these particles are moving out from this granules and they will positioned side by side properly with the water molecule like this that means there are no free space in this container there are no free space in this container to enter another new molecule then after dissolving or after making this solution if you are pouring more um, sugar granule then sugar this last amount of sugar molecule will not dissolve that means this dissolving property or the constantly moving 
of this sugar molecule and positioned the sugar molecule side by side of this water molecule due to the process of diffusion that means by the process of process of diffusion constantly and this is a confirmed proof that these particles are first proof that uh, matters are contain are containing this particle and the particles are constantly moving so from diffusion we have two conclusion matters confirm they are they are containing some particles and the second proof is these particles are moving okay next next thing what brownian motion so brownian motion same uh, from brownian motion we have same conclusion but what is brownian motion robert brown first discover or first found this event brownian motion robert brown what he did he did uh, that uh, some he took some water in a beaker and he poured some pollen grains in the water and with that with this this scenario or this incident he observed not in his eye he observed instead of this he observed it in a powerful microscope when he is observing in the powerful microscope then he found that this pollen grains suppose is a space inside the container this pollen grains one single pollen pollen grain there is a continuous motion and this continuous motion has no particular direction and no particular position and that means this pollen grains are not static in a single position continuously there will be to and fro there will be uh, zigzag motion will be there that means this motion prove that that why this pollen grains are going here and there because the water molecule are continuously forcing them to and hitting them to go in a random motion so by this robert brown consider also the same fact as the pollen grains are going from here to there and in a zigzag motion random way so there will be some heating particles that heating particles are water particles and water particles that means continuously moving okay so this is a brownian motion conclusion and again the same case you will find from tindall effect so you can search it tindall effect not actually in your syllabus so i am not uh, interested to explain this in this way but just check tindall effect means if in this pollen grains the 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 dense uh, in a in a dense uh, solution if the pollen grains uh, or some particle small particles if you are uh, pouring this some small particle and if the uh, if if you uh, reflecting some light in it so there will be a continuous reflection between the inner particles and what is the reason of this continuous reflection the continuous reflection the reason of this reflection is in between them this air particles are moving again this air particles are moving that means the dust particles you can use the pollen grains these are moving that means the same thing that water particles are hitting this dust particle so the light is continuously uh, distracting or dif or reflecting so the tindall effect scientists tend to so the tindall effect is also this kind of proof okay so uh, we have uh, to cover this proof uh, it's okay so now uh, so you can say me sir you are always trying to tell that uh, some particles of gases or some particles of liquid why you are not saying some particles of solid okay so next 
in case of solid we all know that means in case of solid means if we are not now at least up to uh, up to now our uh, discussion we are not classifying the the nature of the matter so uh, if uh, we are saying like this matters with shape a proper shape and they are if rigid matters are proper shape rigid and um, proper size we have some matters around us they have proper shape rigid and matter uh, and proper size so what indicate this thing suppose a matter having proper shape rigid and size so this thing means suppose this is a space or this is a specimen of a matter and this size is particular and no one can change this size if they are remain with this that means if you are not doing something or you are not breaking this thing then it will remain with this size that means what some more particles are continuously in a concentric manner like this having no intermolecular space between them are centralized in a small space why what is the reason of this shape the, the reason of this shape is like this so if the reason of this shape like this that means it is also possible that in some type of matter in some type of matter the partic uh, the particles are continuously moving from one to another and there is a continuous motion that means as there is some space but in some matter in our nature it is also possible that if the in a small space they are concentrating that means between them there is a interaction or an attraction attraction force that means intermolecular space that means intermolecular space is less is less where in this case the attraction is very much is very much less and intermolecular space is higher so in this case attraction is less and the intermolecular space intermolecular space is higher okay so by our all this evidence we can sum up the properties of the particle of the matter so what are the total sum up of uh, this properties of the particle of the matter so the particles so we can say the particles of matter the particles of matter first very small tiny they have unconditional or random motion they have proper shape that means proper shape means sorry they have interaction between them interaction force interaction force interaction force between them and inter molecular space between them inter molecular space between them depending on their nature okay so this thing first very small they have random motion inter interaction force they have okay it may be um, greater or less again we can say this intermolecular forces uh, depending on their nature as well as intermolecular space is depending their nature okay so this are the properties of the particle of matter so the last thing 
we can end our discussion by these things so now what will be the category or the classification so the type of matter so first solid solid means which properties will go here the properties of proper shape strong interaction force proper shape proper shape strong interaction strong interaction force less intermolecular space less inter molecular space not not such kind of motion of particle except the special cases special cases is what if you are if this solid will participate in diffusion except this okay so these are the category of solid so in the second liquid and gas in chemistry this liquid and gas in these two we can both say that these are the fluids that means this two the particles of these two are continuously moving if they get the free space but there is a slightly difference what is the slightly difference the slightly difference in this liquid there is they are not escaping in this liquid they are not escaping in the container they are not escaping from the open container okay that means just think in the liquid the particles are not escaping from the open container that means this have a fixed uh, surface area or the fixed area but in the gaseous system they are continuously moving if they will get any kind of free space so this is the slightly difference again i am telling what is the slightly difference between them liquid will not escape from open container by itself having a definite surface for this liquid having definite surface and there is no definite surface and the molecules of this will escape if they got any if they get any free space okay so this are the slightly difference and the main um, similarity between them in these two the both the molecules are constantly moving as constantly moving the intermolecular space the inter molecular space is larger that means higher larger and the attraction between them and the attraction between them between them less so this is the total our discussion about matter and after this the next video we will again uh, explain the solid liquid and gases in more detail okay